everybody, it's Safi and Marco to Shout Out Movies, the only movie review show on YouTube to review movies in terms of food. And it's just Marco here once again, and on the flip side, talking about the top 10 worst moments of 2022, I am now here to talk about the best moments of 2022, which, you know, this video might be shorter and I think it's just because with the worst moments, I really wanted to thoroughly try to explain each situation, you know, whereas with this, you know, a lot of the best moments are just, you know, they don't really require as much explanation. So, you know, I know it'll further the agenda of like, you know, I, I like to be a negative critic you know, I know it'll, you know, seem like, oh, of course, the, the positive video is a lot shorter. But I promise it's just because there's less to talk about. Or maybe it will be just as long as those videos. So, for starters, I have modified this sitting on the floor arrangement a little bit. I have stuffed a Christmas sweater behind my back at the place where the drawer handle is and so now the drawer handle is is cushioned by the or there's like a a buffer in between the drawer handle and my back as well I have all these moving boxes still uh because I don't I don't really see the purpose of taking anything out uh except if I need it and so what I think is instead of putting the the fucking uh the the I don't know what to call it the background board instead of putting that on the top of the bed stand type of you know wooden thing at the end of the bed I think that a much better idea would be to tape the uh the background to the boxes from all sides, you know, so I tape it from the top and, you know, you have like three boxes, rows, and, and I tape it the top, sides, bottom, and I think that that actually might do the job, I don't know, but I think that might be a little bit better of an idea, and then I could, you know, the only problem is that I'd have to make it taller because I'd have to sit at the side of the bed and then I'd have to, I don't know if the computer chair will fit over here. I'm not sure. See, there's so many different components to doing like a live video when you don't really have any space to to shoot the live video. So, you know, it was a lot easier at the old home when I could just you know, sit on the couch, point the video, uh, point the camera, <laughs> point the camera towards me on the couch, and then just shoot the video, you know, it was so much easier, it was so much, you know, uh, but I can't do that now, so, uh, and, oh, no, I just, I just, I <laughs> Like, you guys see how good it's going to be when I do that Valentine's Day Scrooge movie? Like, it's going to be perfect. So, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven honorable mentions. So, the first one would be digging at my house for artifacts, which to me, it feels almost like uncovering a mystery all on my own and so there's there's sort of an interesting discovery process that I've been doing where I've been you know moving all around all over in these certain areas and digging for artifacts and you know there have been a lot of painful experiences from doing that like of my legs falling asleep and standing up and being like ugh, ugh. and you know also like uh tree branches just like whipping me in the face <laughs> it's just whipping me like evil dead style and then 
uh, my hand getting sore from using the trowel. And, you know, just so you guys have an idea of how much I, I dig when I go there, uh, when I do dig, I wake up in the middle of the night and, and seething pain in my hands uh, from digging. And so, you know, it's a, it's a hardcore experience. Uh, but it was so cool when I found certain things. Like, I think my favorite things so far have been, I found a railroad spike, which is awesome. A full railroad spike. I actually found another one, but I didn't get it uh, in the hole. And then I found an axe head. I think that's another favorite thing that I found. And then I found a pair of scissors with some sort of twine inside it. And they were broken scissors, and I thought that was really cool. And there have been just so many cool things, and, you know... It, it feels like there are so many more cool things all over the place there. And, you know, it's hilarious because when I message those fucking retards uh, who are in charge of this so-called community, uh, you know, they said that they can respect the alleged historic value of the house. And it's like... <laughs> You know why they're saying that, too? It's because if they acknowledged that it was historic, then it would be like, you know, a moral and ethical question of, okay, you're acknowledging it's historic, but you're tearing it down. Like, you know, that's illegal. And the house has been around ever since the 1800s. It objectively is historic. I mean, that's more than a hundred years. You know, we were watching that uh, American Horror Story Hotel. And they were talking about, like, oh, we have to wait it out until 2016. Because then that'll mark a hundred years. Well, this house has been around for way longer than that. Uh, So, you know, it is a historic building. That is, like, an objective fact. And, you know, it's just so hilarious to finding, like... I think by now I've been I'd be willing to bet I've found over a thousand artifacts and I will just be finding more and more and more until I'm blue in the face. <laughs> and uh you know it's just laughable to now especially to say like it's it has an alleged historic value. Like that that's just like It's so sickening and it's so, like, embarrassing to, you know, call yourself, like, a member of a community and, uh, but a a leader of a community and then you're so brain dead and you're so retarded that you can't even, you know, acknowledge an objective fact, you know, like, (laughs) it's just pretty bad. I mean, it just shows how, you know, these people need to be held accountable and they need to be put their feet need to be put to the fire and and then not taken off even, you know, when they do the right thing. And so that was a big part of it about, you know, it just shows, like, you know, you could literally, like, dig with your hands and just scoop a little bit of dirt and you'd find something. You know, even if it isn't that big, you'd find it and you put it in your hand and... <laughs> And and you'd be like, you know, this is a a historical property. This is not a just some random, you know, uh, worthless property like all the properties that the developers like to build. You know, this is a a property with value, and it has actual value to it. It do, it doesn't just have a you know like a gay cardboard cutout cookie cutter look to it, you know, it it is a very rare, valuable, never to be, you know, seen again type of deal, and so, then I found the hole, and that made it even worse, because, (laughs) because it showed that these people who owned it were so lazy, and so, like, thoughtless, 
and stupid that they didn't even like bother to check I mean there's this huge gaping hole and and you know I guess it was either a well or an outhouse or what uh, and then it was modified into something else and you know there's all this stuff down there like I found a sled I told you guys that and I brought the sled back and I found tons and tons of shit and the artifact pieces are like instead of being the size of like a quarter they're the size of like what they actually were so you know you'll find like whole bottles whole cans whole this whole that and you know it it's really interesting and it's just you know like they couldn't have even like bothered to get rid of that stuff like you know, literally all they did was just board it up. They're like, you know, oh, we're not going to bother to check down there. We're just going to board it up. And that's why if, and I have been finding bones. And if those bones are, are not animal, then they're going to be in big trouble. Because that would show negligence of not bothering to, you know, check and then the people who did whatever they did, they got away, and they didn't even have to work. And honestly, I would have done the same thing. If I were a serial killer, and I knew how these these uh, landlords were so retarded, uh, the fucking Nutter family, uh, I would have just taken full advantage and like become like a infamous <laughs> serial killer, which is hilarious, because that's what people did on that property like with the medium after having the the reading session with her you know she just confirmed like there are so many things that happened on in the house that it would be impossible to even begin to fix uh the the you know the spiritual problems which shows that you know there have been so many bad things that have gone on there that it is like it's iconic enough to be on the level of the Winchester house all these other haunted house type places it is that bad and so the fact that you know that that, that this is just now being discovered you know that's one of the key problems with this community is that they like to keep everything quiet and they like to pretend like, you know, there's this artificial, like, oh, everything's fine, everything's fine, and they never really are open and honest and transparent, and they don't really care about the community, like, having actual knowledge, you know, they think their community are, are as stupid as they are, and so they don't want them to have, like, all the facts and the information about things, and so, it's really cool like discovering it for myself because you know the more and more you put together this picture the more and more these people look bad and look terrible and it it's like uh, but it's all alleged though I'm saying like you know they allegedly look terrible wink wink uh, you know you can put together two and two yourself you know I don't even have to tell you that so I think that's about it for that and I spent most of that time complaining <laughs> and then my birthday I thought I should put that in the highlights simply because there were a couple of successes even though it, as I said it was like opposite to where like almost every element turned out the opposite just like all the other events in the year there were a couple of excuse me there were a couple of nice things that you know they were uh, pretty solid events and I think one of the things was watching those three TV episodes and just having breakfast by myself because it, it felt like a nice little like a simple but really entertaining part of the day and it felt like oh this is this is gonna this is gonna turn out really good 
And then uh, bowling and getting the potato skins was really fun. And then the cake was really good. I thought that the cake was the highlight of the day because it, it was so creative and it was so perfect and, and yet simple. And I would also say, even though I complained, those, those panties, they kept me from eating that bean burrito fully. Uh, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, just go watch the full video about the birthday experience. But I was thankful because it would have been the absolute worst if I wouldn't have been able to sleep all night because I was sick. You know, at least I only got up, I got sick once, and then I went back to bed. You know, that wouldn't have been the case if I had eaten that whole bean burrito. So, I'm <laughs> I'm actually kind of thankful that that Oregon uh, biatch turned out to be a scammer. So, I would say that overall, it was also a good lesson too because I really want to make sure that I get the next, the next one right. Like all, all this did was really it gave me a lot of like confirmations about what to do and what not to do. Like, I shouldn't have waited that late to order the food. And I shouldn't have waited that late to figure out getting the commentary uh, thing that I needed to get. Because if I had gotten that, that would have made it a lot better, you know, knowing that... Uh, so, I think that's something else. And then releasing my book, you know, this was really fun because it felt like it, just the perfect embodiment of like what what kind of things I'd like to do the way that it 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 had some serious moments in it it had a lot of comedic moments and it was honest and it was just completely like fun fast-paced good and I think that the the best thing about it was that the 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 audiobook you know uh, they always say to over deliver in substance for for the value of what people are getting or I I can't remember how they say it but basically you want to make people satisfied if they buy something if they uh you know, want to get something. The only thing that I would regret is making it free. I think I should have made people pay for it because I think a lot of people, they just, uh, they just listened to the audiobook and they didn't buy the book on Amazon, which, which is unfortunate because I wrote the version for Amazon after I did the audiobook and I took all of the flaws that I saw from the audiobook and I I I fixed them with the, the Amazon version. And so, you know, the the ebook would have been a much better choice uh, to purchase because there was so much more content too. There were more stories, there were more I think better wording in some cases of how I was speaking. And so it was just very fun to like release something creative again because in 2021 I released Super Dumbasses which felt like a fail since you know it didn't have an end and it was incomplete and it was a disaster there was no script there was no anything it was just a a mess it should have just been packaged as a a vlog series or something, I don't know. But see, that wouldn't have been a movie. And so that wouldn't have been as satisfying to say like, oh, I did a vlog series. And so the book felt like something I had more control over. And it felt like something where I got to say my piece about everything possible. Like all the issues that I would have to talk about in terms of like bringing up all the time uh, just casually like oh remember that one time remember that one time like 
the whole book is just remember that one time, you know, like you can go find out all the opinions on these different issues and, and just feel like satisfied about me as a character or dissatisfied. You know, it, it's the full package that you're getting with the book. And I would say, too, my favorite part of the book was the structure of it. You know, I really love the structure because if you look at the book, it, it the way it it's like a build up to meeting lunch girl, and then it's the downfall after meeting her, and so that's kind of like the middle of the book. And I didn't even do that on purpose. It was just the perfect uh, plot structure, and I really thought that it was it was great. And it was also funny, too, because uh, I released it to a couple of people. And I even said, you know, I'll give you the free book. I'll give you the free document uh, to read, um, uh, Microsoft Word. And only, like, two people wanted it. And so and that's another thing for me about, like, getting an audience from YouTube is that you don't have to rely on these shitty friends who don't ever support anything that you do. You know, you can, uh, you know, get people who are actually supportive and actually engage in what you do. Uh, And so I, I only sold one copy, but still, it definitely was a highlight. And then ending Better Call Saul reviewing on a high note, this one was really nice because... When we started off reviewing Better Call Saul, I expected it to be really popular, and I expected, you know, I expected a much more pleasant sort of uh, embrace by the community. And it was disappointing because I was being very nice to the episodes in Season 4, even though they were pieces of shit, and I was being very fair and balanced. And instead, all I was met with were these pussy-ass, bitch-boy, fake fanboys. And, ow, my toenail is... Oh, God, my toenail broke inside my sock, and it's caught. It's... Oh, oh, that that doesn't feel good. Oh, that's that's weird. That is very weird. My toenail is breaking off like like a Kit Kat, like a piece of a Kit Kat. Ugh. Okay, I got it untangled. Oh, God, now I feel the toenail rubbing up against my toe. Oh. Oh. (laughs) So it was really terrible. It was really a bad experience reviewing it because then then what happened was the few amount of people who were watching the reviews uh, quit watching the reviews. And so the reviews went from like 40 views to only like 10 views to 8 views. And it showed that like, you know, these people, they're so brain dead. They don't have, they don't have the ability to handle other people's opinions. And so they don't even want to watch the reviews because they just can't handle it. And another thing was I was really looking forward to sharing it in the Better Call Saul Breaking Bad uh, Facebook group. But the the person who was in charge of that group kicked me out after I criticized this meme that, you know, it was like this fake news uh, Star Wars meme where they were saying, like, look, look at all these poor little Star Wars actors who got bullied. Wah! And it was just all a bunch of bullshit, you know, like it was saying that, you know, Daisy Ridley, she was bullied off of social media because she's a whammon. And it's like, no, she was bullied off of social media because she shared her stupid politics and she couldn't handle people pushing back against that. Like, there's nothing bullying about, like, you know, don't put out your opinion if you don't expect to get pushed back and criticism and uh, so it was like, you know, she chose that. And, you know, all these other people, you know, it was just 
Like, you know, let's make all these people poor, innocent little victims so that we can blame the fans. And it's like, wait a second, this is a group about being a fan. This is not a group uh, so that you can just mindlessly praise things and mindlessly praise characters. And that's another thing, is that to criticize a character for some reason is equivalent to these people of criticizing an actor you know just because I say that Kim from Better Call Saul is a piece of shit that doesn't mean I I'm saying that the actress playing her is a piece of shit you know if I wanted to say that she was a piece of shit I would say she's a piece of shit you know I wouldn't have any qualms about doing that you know, and as for the bullying thing, like, I don't think that people will want to know what I would be like as a bully, and so, like, whenever people, like, do that, it's just kind of pathetic, and so, I went on there, and all I said was just, this meme is false, and, you know, this was not true, this is not true, this is not true, and I disputed with facts and evidence, and then immediately got kicked out, and I lost like that multiple thousands of people uh, audience so then years later you go to Better Call Saul season 6 I didn't even want to watch Better Call Saul season 6 because I hated season 5 so much and the, the finale at least where they ruined everything and it just seemed like oh what's left these shitty little plots that I don't care about because they're so worried about rushing the show to an ending too early. And so I really didn't even want to watch it. I ha- I hated having to watch it. But I thought, you know, maybe even though it's rushed and it's still trash, maybe it'll be good because it'll be all the last tricks that the writers would pull out of the the hat like you know a magician pulling like a rabbit out of a hat you know I thought you know they're gonna pull it out of their asses and they're gonna make a good final send off or I thought maybe the first half will be trash and then the second half where it's in Breaking Bad that'll be really good and I, I was really kind of excited even though I knew at the back of my mind the they can't be trusted and what do you know they not only made the worst season of the show but they it you could tell that they rewrote and they changed everything they originally wanted to do because of feminism and so there was all these agendas in the season about you know they they hate their main character and you know i just don't understand how fans of the show could could hate the main character and could approve the type of treatment that they gave him you know this actor who had a heart attack on set uh while he was filming one of the shittiest episodes of the series uh you know that's terrible and the fact that they didn't even let him recover you know it's it's like this is how you treat actors in Hollywood oh wait it's because he's a man and so and so then of course it's all about uplifting their main female character who's complete trash she's a mystery box character uh if even that and so i i just i said you know what screw this i am not going to be nice to the show anymore i am not going to be uh you know amenable marco I'm going to go full savage on the show and I'm going to unleash like my full attack my full you know full on like reviewing attack obviously and so I just I went completely honest completely 100% like just like I I think probably people watched it and just felt sick after watching it because you know, of just the fact that, like, ugh, like, he's right, like, you know, it was like a, a shock for people, because there were so many people who, 
you know, they were so used to this fanboy uh, lifestyle of just everyone is going to have the same opinion, the same mindless zombie opinion. And, and they were so shocked that like, oh, this guy, he's being really honest. He's telling the truth. <gasps> and, and it's like, I think that it was like a culture shock for these people. And, and it was really nice because since I got a thousand times more negative and honest, I got a thousand times more uh, support. And I got all these longtime loyal fans because of it. And I got all these people who were like me who said that uh, they were sick of all these review channels being biased and just saying, Better Call Saul's a masterpiece. Better Call Saul's a masterpiece. You know, like, I got all the support that, you know, it, it just showed to me that, you know, I should have been like that all along. You know, I shouldn't have been holding back because I wanted to like the show and because I, I wanted you know, the people to not be mad at me for being honest about the show. And so it was really cool because then the finale video it's it's one of like the top 30 40 videos on the channel and I never would have expected that to happen like it was so uh encouraging and so cool and it was such it was a victory like even though there's like going to be this rewrite of history where you know they sort of pretend like there wasn't any backlash to the show and they're going to pretend like, you know, everybody loved it. You know, it's like, you know, yeah, that's just the people that you paid to love it, you know. And that's another thing, is that we discovered that they pay people or they pay whatever to give fake reviews of their show. And it's so ironic since the show's all about a con man. It's so ironic that they're conning their own audience into thinking that, it has this much of a positive reception. And you could just see the fact that, like, how full of themselves they all were. You know, doing these behind-the-scenes videos where they're like, You know what? This episode was shitty, but it was literally the only thing that could happen. Like, we didn't write the story. The story wrote itself. And it was just the only way. Wink, wink. As well, another review thing that was a highlight was ending the Blumhouse horrible, flaming hot trash Halloween series on a high note. You know, this was another funny thing where, you know, I didn't even want to review Halloween 2018. I didn't want to support it. I didn't watch it. And I will proudly say I didn't support any of the three. I watched them all on YouTube for free on shitty quality, and uh, I did not give them a single cent, and I'm glad that I didn't support them because of what they did to the series, and it was so nice, though, because with all three reviews, it felt like <laughs> it was like a mind-blowing, positive reception. You know, there were all these people who agreed, and it was funny, too, because... It reminded me a bit of The Last Jedi, where, you know, I really hated The Force Awakens, and I said, after that, I'm not going to be supporting any more Disney anything. I'm not going to be giving them a single cent. I'm not going to be watching Last Jedi, Rogue One. I'm not watching it, and I'm not going to support their agenda filmmaking. And it's funny, because then... With The Last Jedi, all the people who supposedly liked the first one, they all woke up and they all were like, ah! you know, it was like a, it was like a, a war zone in the fan base because people actually woke up thanks to Last Jedi being that bad. But to me, Force Awakens was, you know, even worse because I, I haven't watched any more of them. And I'm not going to. I refuse. I'm not going to support them. And it made it even worse that I saw The Force Awakens on my birthday. I mean, 
I mean, ew, gross. What a terrible movie to see on your birthday. Ew. <laughs> so it was the same thing where all these people who said, oh, the, the first two Halloween Blumhouse movies, they were masterpieces. You know, even they hated Halloween Ends. Like, Halloween Ends was so bad, it defined, it, it created a whole new level of bad. Like, it's so bad that, like, there there's nothing, like, it, it, it's just, it's the worst. It's the absolute worst. And you can tell they didn't have a vision. They don't know what to do. They let uh, the sellout Jamie Lee, Jamie Lee crybaby Curtis in charge of the movie, and she ruined it. And, you know, it was a similar thing to Better Call Saul, where you had this prominent female character, and it became all about her, and she ruined it. You know, she, she, just, she destroyed the series so that she could have her little special send-off where, you know, they subverted expectations and had Corey Cunningham as the main villain, like, fuck off, fuck you, and so, uh, it was a very positive reception, and it, it was, it, it was like ending it on a high note that, like, oh, I won, people have turned completely against Blumhouse, Blumhouse Halloween, I've won with that one, and that was the battle that I didn't think that I would win, Finishing the X-Files was nice. You know, originally I made the brain-dead decision to try to watch that whole series in one sitting, <laughs> which is <laughs> which is sort of like... <laughs> like, that seems like either a torture experiment for a creepypasta or like a like a last hoorah of a review channel. Like, it just seems like the most asinine thing to do. To to do, like, a commentary for thousands and thousands of hours. Like, ugh. And so I, I was really not looking forward to reviewing the show because I wanted to finish American Horror Story. And I was mad that I I was going to stop that and spend a year working on the X-Files. So I was really happy and really relieved to not have to review that anymore. Because oh, it was a slog. I mean, there were so many bad episodes. There were so many mind-numbingly bad decisions and it was funny, too, because this is one of the few times where people actually criticized the later seasons. Like, they, they full-on criticized, like, no, we're not going to accept this trash. We're not going to accept that the cigarette man raped Scully and created William. Uh, we're not going to accept all of this uh, political agenda bullshit. You know, we're not, we're not going to accept it. You know, we're going to fight back. We're going to criticize and tell you guys, you guys made a mistake. And, you know, we're not just going to sit around and go, Hey, everything was nice. Everything was good. You know, we're going to fight back. And so it was really cool to see at least that it wasn't a Better Call Saul type situation where the fans all had their heads in the mud. So the last honorable mention, and I'll take a drink first. The last honorable mention is going to the Goodwill bins. And so it was cool because it's the perfect place for like a psychic medium because we're very good at finding things that are lost and can't be found. And so I was able to, you know, when I go to the bins, I find all the good stuff. I find all these things that like, oh, how do people leave that behind? How do people leave that behind? And it's like, you know, because they're, because they just, you know, they don't know. And so I just go there and I pick things up and I pick up gold. You know, there was this one time where, and it's, it's, and I know that's a brag, and I know it might sound like an egotistical brag, but it's just honest. 
uh, like there was this one time we're walking in the parking lot and I just picked up this metal ring and it, (laughs) it turned out that the metal ring is like this famous brand and that like you can sell the metal ring for like 30 bucks or something and so like I just pick something out of the parking lot and I find something good but the first time we went there it was really nice because I was like you know there's so much good stuff here that you could probably just go shopping here and not even shop at other stores like to find Christmas presents and all that type of stuff clothes uh, well not clothes completely but uh, I found some really cool things, like, I found a book about, uh, what's that guy's name, David Parker Ray, the serial killer, and I was really happy because, you know, it's, it's a gross and disgusting book, but I, re- I was like, oh, cool, I found a true crime book, and, and that's something that, you know, you have to search around for those on the internet, and then uh that was the first time there too so i found something that valuable that i that i like to read and it was a nice thing but the best thing was this cookbook and it's called like ruth mayflower's cookbook or something and i picked it up and i opened it and i was like oh look it's a cookbook And I I was, like, opening everything and looking into it. And in the cookbook, you look on the inside, and there was this personalized autograph from the fucking author of the fucking book. And I was like, wait a second. (laughs) Like, why is it that all these people have been here, and they passed this up, this book that is from like the 1900s and the author of the book autographed it like that is a that's a treasure if I've ever seen one and what do you know the author is the woman who invented the chocolate chip cookie and so that was like a legendary find and I found that on the first uh, trip there And then later on, I thought it was great because I was able to find all these props, wardrobe there, and, you know, it wasn't perfect. You know, I did find a couple of things that are crap, and I'll just throw them away. But I found a lot of great stuff and and a lot of great props and wardrobe and it's the perfect place and you don't pay for the individual items you pay for the the amount of pounds that they weigh and so that that makes it even better i think my favorite thing that i found in terms of props and wardrobe is uh there was a pair of women's uh yellow leather uh boots and I thought these are perfect for a wardrobe for this character and and they're very stylish, very vintage and and, and it was so cool because it's hard to find both shoes in the bins like it, it's a rare thing for people to find both halves of the shoe because uh, for some reason they all get separated and lost and so people have a hard time doing that. Well, I found uh, the other half, and I was really excited. It took me like an hour, but it was worth it. So, those are the honorable mentions. Now we're getting to the top ten. The first one was getting a haircut in August or July, I can't remember, so it was really funny because I told you guys about that roast YouTube channel, well, I was deciding, I really like doing the roasts for fun, it's like a side thing, 
They're just private gifts for one person, and uh, they're not hurting anyone. And I thought, since I'm going to be working on the film, I need to stop doing these roasts until I'm done with the film. You know, I need to put all my attention and focus into the film. And so I thought, I'm going to do one last roast. And it was funny because I discovered this character. And sort of, the, one of the funnier things about the roast was that the main character who uh, my friend specifically requested, she was not very interesting, and she was like, she was like a side character in her own roast, because there were all these other characters who were 10,000 times more interesting and one of those ones uh, was somebody that I called Scary BJ because she had the like these braces and it was really hilarious and she always had like a look and pictures like like a monster from a, a Dead Space video game and and it was funny because I saw that she was a hair cutter and I thought oh it would be so hilarious to to go there and get a haircut from this roast character and, you know, she doesn't know me at all. And so, you know, it'll be like the ultimate gag to go there and film it. And it'll be like a Mission Impossible type of mission. And it'll be really fun and funny. <laughs> and <laughs> it was like like a dream thing to do. And so I went there. and It was kind of a disastrous day because... We got raising canes, and Safi was having a fucking rage fest about getting raising canes instead of getting KFC, and she was hungry, and we were. She thought we were going to be late to the haircut, and it was funny because it only took like twenty minutes to get there. It took way less time than you know she was worried that it would take, and when we got there. I turned on the camera, the little spy pen camera, and uh, it was funny too because I accidentally turned it off. And so the whole time that I was getting a haircut from Scary BJ, I thought that I was filming, uh, and and then of course I wasn't. And so it was it was really like. <laughs> Like, I had it in my pocket, in my shirt pocket. I wore, like, the only shirt that I have that has a pocket. And I had it in there with a piece of paper and another pen to as not to arouse any suspicion. And it was just so funny. <laughs> I thought I was doing something funny and sly. And then it turned out that it wasn't filming at all. And so that that was pretty, uh, like, oh, damn it. That was that type of moment. But then it, it turned out to be a really good haircutting experience. You know, my hair was very long, and I was so glad to get it cut. And, of course, I told you guys that the hair buzzer broke the first, I mean, the second time that I got one in December. Well, it, it also kind of broke in the first haircut that I got from her. And the haircutter turned off uh, because it needed to be charged. And so, so it also pulled like a little patch of hair. And it was a really funny experience. It, it was just like, it, it was so, I don't even want to say everything because, you know, privacy. Uh, but there were so many like little funny jokes that came into play uh and there was this really funny part too at the end where I took a picture with her and I won't put it on here because uh privacy reasons and then I gave her like a 20% tip and I thought you know what what's was funny about this whole thing was that I needed a hairstyle for my film and I needed a really good haircut and I didn't know what to get. 
and she gave me like the perfect haircut it was the perfect style for the character and I thought like ooh this is actually perfect and I'm gonna be getting my haircut like this every time now because it was that good so that was really good I really like doing that I know that it sounds funny and goofy but I went there and I paid for the service and I su supported the place so there's really nothing to complain about you know this whole like bullying bullshit you know it's just like yeah okay <laughs> like and I've and I've gone there another time now so I'm a repeat customer like so she's actually a really good hair cutter and she she really does pay extra attention into detail and she'll go back and she'll say no I don't like that that doesn't look good and she'll go back and fix things and you know it, just perfect haircutting skills and uh, very fun experience doing that because it really was like a Mission Impossible mission like it was so funny and the, the video that I made was funny as well where I talked about it so number nine is my medium session the medium session was nice because it confirmed a lot of things you know she definitely is talented it also raised questions and it also felt a little surprising you know there were a couple of things that were really really shocking first off the thing about the entity that's in the mirror downstairs you know that that whole like discovery answered so many questions of like oh this is why I I get kind of freaked out when I take a shower in that bathroom because I used to have this like worry that something was watching me and oh it was because there was an entity in the mirror and I didn't like the entity watching me and so like it's it's that like uh, cool like the fact that it answered all these questions you know of like oh why do I have this fear of like closing my eyes in the shower uh, and, you know, when I wash my hair, you know, it's because of the, the mirror. And then so I would I would take Bernie, my cat, in there as protection. And it also explained, like, he would freak out in the bathroom. And it wasn't just because of the, the water. It was because he didn't want to be in front of the mirror. And so it was really cool uh, to learn that. You know, I would take him in there as, like, a... Uh, protection which is funny uh, a couple of times and uh, another thing that I learned was apparently like in my past lives I was a magi uh, I was a uh, a sorcerer magician which was really funny to me because whenever I play a video game like a role-playing video game I never choose magician. I never choose the person with magic powers. <laughs> and so it was it was so ironic that like, oh, that's what I was before. You know, <laughs> you know, so I thought that was cool. The the ultimate surprising thing was that she said that the brick was the least of my problems. And that was so, like, surprising because up to that point, I had thought that the brick was all of my problems. Because, really, the majority of the problems started after I got the brick. But the, the real thing is just the brick was like an amplifier. And it was like, you know, the, the it was like kind of a deceiving thing to throw me off and make me think oh it's just the brick it's just the brick and uh it was really nice and it was really 
satisfying to get that reading. You know, it was only like $40 for that reading. It was very n a nice price. And, you know, she was so nice and she was so thorough and detailed. There were a couple of weird little, like, things that didn't make sense to me. Like, there was this thing where she said that I should learn more about the history of the house. But then she said after that, that, oh, you don't want to do that because if you get too obsessed, then that's drawing you back in. And you don't want to, you know, go down the rabbit hole. So I thought that was kind of like a conflicting message. And then she said, uh, she did confirm too that there was this uh, female ghost, middle-aged woman, and that she was a, a negative spirit. And she said, uh, she said she'd like to draw that person. And so she was ready to start the drawing at that time. Uh, but then, when we were going to do the drawing session, she said, oh no, I'm not going to do that. It wouldn't be a good idea because if you have a picture of her, it'll, it'll bring her to you. And so it was kind of like this conflicting thing. But still, like it was such a fulfilling thing and I can't wait to do the one with the psychic in January because it'll be Sharon's birthday when I get the reading and it, it I I think it's going to be really really good. I think it's going to be like one of the highlights of next year and it might even be higher on the list than number 9. I was also really disappointed because I really wanted to get for my birthday, I wanted to get another session with her, but the particular type of session, she removed that service from her website, and so, so I couldn't get that, and I thought, oh, that's, that's disappointing. <laughs> so number eight is filming my movie before learning the news. I really thought that filming was was pretty fun. It was it was really cool to to adapt my visions into reality. You know, in particular the dream sequences. It was really fun to like see those come to life because at first I thought the dream sequences they're going to be the hardest sequences to film. And what do you know those were the first things that I filmed and they were easy they were they were both like pretty easy like i i barely had any issues and so like that was really cool the only thing that i really didn't like about it was the fact that it didn't feel right it didn't feel perfect because i was the only person filming it was just me and it feels like filming a movie it should be with more than one person and so it didn't really feel like as it was as good as it could have been so but I still had a ton of fun and I can't wait for you to see the footage and the completed film and then there was this particular this particular sequence that I filmed that was the opening title sequence and what happened was I was going to the bathroom and I saw this dying lightning bug on the floor and it kept on uh, lighting up but it couldn't move or anything and so I had this like strike of inspiration where I could film the lightning bug at all these different spots and on these different things and it made for a really spooky moody opening sequence and it was just so artistic and fun to do that number seven was grilling ugh, sorry this is just it's uncomfortable so I'm like trying to adjust and it's like ugh. number seven was grilling for the final three times 
So, one of the idiotic things that the other person did is that he got rid of all of his tools and all of his grills. So, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars worth of grills and tools gone. You know, like the lawnmower, the uh, one, one of the snow shovels, yard tools, you know, everything. Which is the most, like, stupidest fucking thing. Like, I, I've never heard of when someone moves... Uh, they just throw all their things away. It's just the most stupidest fucking shit I've ever heard. Because he's never going to have the money to replace all that stuff. You know, he's ne- and he's going to have to replace all of it. So, you know, all of these tools which were vintage, which were really cool, really uh, interesting tools. You know, it never going to have those again. So... You know, that it's like, you know, like, this is kind of pathetic. This is kind of weird. This is kind of like, ooh, type of thing. Because it's, it's sort, it was sort of like a part of an agenda. You know, uh, sort of like a, it, it, like a, like a victim agenda where they would get rid of all this stuff and so that then you'd feel sorry, uh, and and be like, oh, it's because they're old and they they just can't do anything because they're so pathetic and uh, useless. And it's just like, you know, come on. This is fucking stupid. And so I thought, you know, I'm going to grill for the final three times here. You know, I'm going to take advantage because, y- y- you know, I wanted to at least do that since... You know, you can't grill here, uh, so I'm going to have to wait all this time to grill again. Uh, you know, I'm going to grill, and I'm going to be the last person to grill. Uh, while you just sit around and just throw all your stuff away like a fucking retard. So, first I grilled brats twice, and they were probably the best brats I've ever tasted. And they were better than they had ever been cooked by this other person ever in history. Because what I did was I left them inside the beer for an extended period of time. And then I closed the lid to the grill. And it just made the brats taste so good. And they were perfect. They were amazing. They were so good that I only ate one brat. Like, that's how, like, I, you know, usually I need to eat two, but I was so satisfied that I only ate one. And I, and another plus was watching The Lone Gunman Season 1, finishing that up while uh, I was eating that meal. (coughs) The last thing that I did was, on the same day where the idiot was selling the last grill, uh, I grilled a beautiful fillet of salmon as the last thing, and it it was pre- it was pretty good. Uh, I overcooked it a little bit, so that was kind of disappointing. But it was still very satisfying to do that. You know, I didn't mention it, but one of the disappointing things was the fact that the whole summer. For months and months and months, when the other person didn't know the news yet, he he refused to grill brats. So, like, the whole summer it was like, oh, when are we going to have brats? When are we going to have brats? And he never did it because he said, it's too hard. He can't, he can't do that. And so, uh, I made them, and then all of a sudden... The second time, he comes outside and starts grilling the brats. <laughs> and, you know, it just shows it was a part of, like, an agenda. And so, like usual. So, number six was writing my film script. And what I did with this was, 
I really like to pace around. You know, I really like to pace around while I'm writing. I like to get on my phone's notes app, pace around, and just write, 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 write. And, uh, I did that for like a whole month. Like the whole month of January to February, I was just pacing around all day, like writing this uh, script. And it was just so much fun to do that and to come up with something creative and, you know, have this kind of hopeful feeling that, you know, okay, I'm scaling back and and I hope that it's going to be made and that it's going to be great. And it was a very intense process writing the script because I was visualizing the whole script and I was really getting into it, which was bad because, of course, then I manifested a lot of it. And so the whole thing with the... There's this part in the script where the main character gets his left ankle injured. Well, then... For three weeks, I had plantar fasciitis in my left foot, and so I had to sit around all day for like a couple of weeks because I needed to to get that foot better. And and so it's basically like a pain in your ankle. It's like a a stabbing pain from uh, walking around too much and wearing down your your feet muscles and things. So, uh, I have manifested that since the character got injured in the ankle, I got injured in the ankle. And see, I didn't know that you could do this type of thing. I didn't know. And so, you know, obviously now I have the certain routine that I can do that the medium taught me about. But I, back then I didn't know that I could do that. So, it was just another thing. And I forgot to mention, too, an important thing about the medium was that I had found her trying to cast I've Been Bitten. You know, I was going to cast her as uh, the the poser vampire who I then cast as my uh, former uh, friend. And so it was a total accident that I stumbled across her and then... Uh, there was this whole like process where I messaged her in like I think like February of 2022 and she said oh I have something going on right now I'll message you when I'm ready to give you a reading and so then I waited for like (laughs) I waited all the way until September and I said you know what I'm gonna just purchase a reading from you no matter what and so then I purchased it and she did it And so it was like uh, they were trying to prevent me from getting that reading. Ew, gross. My PS4 is dirty. Ew. Oh, gross. I'll have to fix that. The writing process, though, is always fun for me. I'm very good at writing, and uh, to me that's always a highlight of making these films, is just writing the script where you get to, you know, write the whole plot and, you know, have all these character arcs, you know, it's kind of hard to explain why it's fun, you know, there's a lot of things that are just fun to certain people because they just like doing them, so... Number five was making the Slasherverse videos. Halloween Ends was so bad that it made me, like, confident in doing these Slasherverse videos. Because before then, I had come up with all these ideas, like, in 2018, and I ne- I didn't really want to release them because I was, I was worried about the reception that they would get. And it's funny because Halloween Ends was so bad, it made me just think, like, you know what? (laughs) No matter what I write in these movie pitches, 
it's going to automatically be better than anything Halloween Ends did. So I was really confident uh, going into those videos. And I did the same thing, where I just paced around and wrote those whole stories. And it, it was incredibly fun. It was incredibly satisfying to write with these characters who I loved uh, from these movies growing up. The first film that I came up with was The Stepfather 4, which to me, it was like a suspense thriller in the style of a psycho movie, and it was really dark, <coughs> it was really intense, and it was really, a. Uh, it was simple. It was very simple, and it was like opening up the floodgate for craziness. And then uh, Sleepaway Camp 5, I have never had a better experience writing something than when I did writing Sleepaway Camp 5. As soon as the killer throws the TV on the random guy in the woods and steals his phone and takes a picture and says, hey, look, it's AI art. <laughs> it's from an AI art app. You know, like, that That was the moment where I just knew this was going to be magical. And it, it was so uh, comedic and fun and funny to, to, you know, almost pretend like I'm really, like, time traveling with the script, you know, because you know that they never make this nowadays. And so I purposefully tried to make it as 80s as possible, as if this movie could have been made in the 80s and released, and people are like, oh, wait a second, I never knew that movie existed. So, I would highly recommend these Slasherverse pitch videos, by the way. Uh, I, I honestly, like, just thinking about them gets me in the mood to, like, go back and, and listen to them because of just how good the stories were. Uh, they were all so complete, and they were so full, and all the characters pretty much had their full-on character arcs, to where even the smallest characters, you kind of feel like, oh, that character got his due, that character got her due. You're never really feeling like, oh, that character wasn't used as much as they could have been. It felt like all the characters played their purposes uh, very well. And then the last pitch that I did was Friday the 13th Immortal. And this one was just, <laughs> it was a whole other level of epic. Because it just felt like the ultimate explosion of awesomeness. I just went crazy. I went crazy and I just, I said, you know, I'm not holding back with this one. And I, I went so over the top that you could, you could probably say that I overindulged and that I did too much, but I don't really care. <laughs> it was, because the, the, the challenging part was that with the stepfather and Sleepaway Camp, I'm a huge fan of those film series is. whereas with Friday the 13th I haven't really gotten into those movies as much so it was so much more challenging for me to write those films I mean to write that one film sorry it also felt like the perfect almost uh, conclusion even though it wasn't even the conclusion to the story, which is still going to be written in the future. It's just I want to make sure I do it safely so that I don't manifest anything in the stories. Especially in the next one where the whole movie is going to be where the characters are stuck in a an asylum hospital, so I don't want to be stuck in an asylum hospital anytime soon.
Number four was watching Eye of the Devil. So the story behind this was that... Sorry about that. The story behind this was that we were supposed to have chili for dinner. And usually I really love chili. And it's one of my favorite uh, meals in the winter time. But this particular time, the other person was going to put a pepper inside the chili. Uh, and it, it was like they were deliberately uh, tampering with the recipe so that they could show off that they did something special and that they improved the chili even though they didn't. And so it was really satisfying to say, you know what, and I don't do this very often, and I just want to say that for the record, but I said, you know what, I'm not eating this. Like, I'm not going to have this chili. You know, uh, the recipe was fine. It did not need to be tampered with. And it was really satisfying to say, no, I'm not going to eat this. I'm not going to uh, pretend like this is good and pretend like this is some sort of an improvement when really it's it's making it worse and it's it's taking all the good stuff out of it by complicating it and adding in more flavors that don't need to be there you know so this person also adds these pinto beans that don't need to be in there any way shape or form and you know they do this kind of stuff all the time you know like they pour sugar in the spaghetti they put all these things in the spaghetti and these things when people aren't looking. And, uh, and you know, they, they ruin them because every time that they do it, you can taste the difference. You can taste that there's just something too much in this. So I said, no, I'm not doing that. I'm not going to eat it. So instead, I got a, a pizza. I got a stuffed crust uh, pizza. And I got a Voodoo Mountain Dew. So it was one of the few times this year where I drank regular soda. And it was an incredibly delicious soda flavor. It was like this orange flavor. It was so perfect. It was definitely an A+. And the pizza was an A+. It was perfectly cooked not too overcooked and it felt like almost like a romantic evening and I could feel a presence there and so I'm not going to go into any specifics with that and what I did after that upstairs but it definitely felt like a particularly unique experience and uh, it was a very incredible viewing experience like it definitely was the best movie experience that I had the entire year and it just felt like uh it was a it was it was like there was somebody else there uh and it felt like it was a multiple and so another thing that was funny was that you know the other person started throwing a temper tantrum that which they you know pretty much do that all the time uh, over anything that, that you know doesn't go their way and so uh, they threw like a temper tantrum for a week or two weeks because of that and, and of course what happened was their temper tantrum was ended because they learned the news about moving and so all of a sudden it was like oh no maybe I should focus on things that are actually important instead of worrying about whether somebody is going to eat a dinner or not and so, and so uh that was really funny it just it was funny because no matter how hard they tried to like ruin my evening and just completely like destroy the experience that I was having it felt like there was like an impenetrable shield that was created by the presence that was there and so it was a very full complete evening I could even put this at number one just because it felt like 
uh, it, it felt like I wish I could have done something like this on my birthday. Uh, so it was a it was an incredible experience. And three, painting my movie's poster. It's the first movie poster that I've ever painted, ever created fully, and I could not have asked for a better experience because I just stood in the corner by the front door and painted on the wall on this this poster and it was it was just like all the creativity coming out onto the page and and just you know letting it all go free and all the ideas coming out and there were so many different little stories that I could tell like at first I painted on the side that you're not supposed to paint on and then there was this whole like three day plus pause where I was trying to figure out how to do the purple in the middle of the picture and I ended up layering like 10 layers of different colors of purple in like this really cool like transition throughout the image to make it more than just oh look it's purple and then I painted the faces on the poster uh, with with very very precise detail or so I thought with like a paintbrush but it was really frustrating because I, I wasn't getting the detail that I wanted. And so I looked up and I discovered a technique that I could use where I could use a Sharpie to finally, you know, draw in all the details. And it, it just made the poster so cool and so epic and so uh, perfect to what my vision was in my head that that you know just appeared in my head you know it was the perfect idea for a poster it's so simple but good you have the picture of a castle and inside the castle you have like a a circle with two ghosts inside it or something it's like kind of like a logo and then at the bottom you have these two faces and it's it's just perfect. It's just utterly perfect. And I could not have asked for a better poster. I really think that... I don't know if it's the best poster I've ever done, though. You know, I do kind of prefer the Distorted Cuts poster that I created. But it is really close, so... Number two was finally seeing the entire summer camp disc from uh, the 2012 summer camp with lunch girl so what happened was in 2021 i spent like an entire month trying to restore the files on this disc because i really wanted to look back and 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 watch that whole disc you know it was such a a life-changing experience uh, at that summer camp and and I couldn't because there were these little scratches on the disc and so when it got to a certain point I couldn't continue watching it and I it it, it was tough I I used toothpaste I used Vaseline I put pieces of tape on the disc I uh let's see what else did I do I cleaned it like 5000 times with eyeglass cleaner I cleaned it with different fabrics. I did. I cleaned it with a toothbrush. I I drew marks on it with a sharpie marker. I did practically everything, but fucking like. I don't know, like just fucking staple it and fucking pound nails into it to fucking fix it somehow. I don't know. And then I got what they call a disc doctor. And that thing only fixed like a couple of seconds and then it made things worse and it, it felt like I wasn't never going to be able to fix this disc and it was also shitty because you know I, I can't really find anybody from the camp to give me a copy of the disc so that I could film it or, or copy it 
to another disc. So it was like, you know, this is the only chance to have this film. <coughs> what I ended up doing was I inserted the disc into my old laptop and I I got this uh, CD recovery toolbox program uh, from 2010 or something and it I, I had to wait because the program kept on running and running and running and it took like two whole days to fix this disc of just non-stop uh, running this program. But it fixed it. And so I was finally able to see this disc of what something that I thought, I'm never going to be able to watch this again. And I now have the file permanently on my laptop. So I'll, I'll always be able to watch that. And I'll copy it to another disc. And even though it's not perfect... And there are a lot of flaws and glitches, and uh, at certain points the screen, the the it, it it goes crazy and it starts like all the lines go all over the place. Like it's still it's like at least I get to watch the full video, and it was a very incredible experience finally seeing the video again for the first time since. I originally watched it, you know, there were a lot of reasons into that, but I go into them in the book. So, number one is building the miniature set for, for my film and then destroying it twice. I'm not going to go into the full specifics of building the set, but basically... Sorry, I made, I turned a box upside down, I put, I made like paper mache mountains, and then I, I painted it, and I put twine all over it, cut up into little tiny pieces to resemble grass, I experimented around with trees, making different types of trees, and then I, I drew out plans for what the house would look like. This infamous haunted house type of place that just... It is the perfect uh, haunted house. It is the perfect house for like a horror movie. Uh, which you'll see in the film. And it was so much fun to like cut out these different shapes out of just a measly cardboard. Just cardboard lying around and then to glue gun those uh, pieces together. And, you know, I know I'm not the glue gun guy, I promise. Because uh, I know I talked about that fucking bitch glue gun girl yesterday. I don't use the glue gun for everything. And then after that, I, I painted some stuff, and then I took this piece of felt... I got this like gr black felt and I put that in as like the road and then I painted over that and it created this really great road texture and then I I took these two small bags of model magic and I was able to cover all of the house the houses with uh, little bricks like fake brick texture and that part was really fun. And then I made candy glass. And I put those in for the windows. And it, it was like the most fun experience of all time. It was just pure creativity. And the best part of it was the fact that. It felt like. The complete creative vision. That I had for the movie. And for the, the setting coming out onto the into reality and it felt like out of all the things that I manifested I'm glad that I manifested this because this is a perfect probably one of the coolest things if not the coolest thing that I've ever created and it, it and I stood there 
in the corner in front of the front door where I like to stand. And I even have pictures to look at of Colorado in front of me. So I kind of have reference for uh, creating like a Colorado type of landscape. And finally, I took it outside. Oh yeah, and also... I did, the hard part was creating the foundation for the ha- <coughs> for the house and what I thought of was wait a second I saw this picture online of a house with uh, tree stumps holding it up and it's like this old house in the middle of the woods from like the 1400s or something and instead of having a foundation, it just has these tree stumps. And so I did that for my house. And I used the model magic, and it just it looks so cool. It, it is so incredible. It is such an awesome uh, set. And then I took it out. I filmed it. That was so much fun as well of taking it out during all these different times to film at different times of the day because that's what I did. You know, I didn't have to worry about traveling to a set at certain times. All I had to do was just walk out the front door when the weather was right and then film it and at different angles and settle on the which one was best. So it was a great experience. And then... To destroy it, because I wanted to destroy it. Well, okay, I didn't want to, but it it gets destroyed in the film, which is kind of like a spoiler, but whatever. It doesn't spoil the film, though. It, It really doesn't. It's just because technically, you know, it could be a dream sequence. You know, it could be a... A nightmare sequence. In fact, maybe I should do that. Oh, I should have done that. Oh. Oh. I could still do that, technically. You know you know that. Like, if I, if I wrote a sequel, I could just have it be where, like, oh, that was all a bad dream. Uh, with, in terms of the house being destroyed. So I took it out with Safi... And I poured lighter fluid all over it, and I set it on fire. And to my surprise, it wasn't doing jack shit. (laughs) Like, I knocked out a couple of windows. It was terrible. And I filmed it, and it was like the most pussy fire you've ever seen. And then I took it into the bathroom, and I took a bunch of little mini red candles and set them on fire and put them inside of the littler house to make it seem like it was on fire or something because of the light in the windows, and that didn't work out. Like, nothing was working. And finally, I just said, fuck it, and I took it out there after learning the news uh, because, you know, that's another thing they didn't like if you just have fires out there you know you could you could grill but you couldn't have like a fire and i just said well fuck these people they can go fuck themselves uh and i took it out there and i put these fire starter bricks or like stone type of things that you use to start a fire and i placed them inside the house and then i set them on fire And it was just the coolest fucking fire you've ever seen in history. It's probably like the coolest, uh, it it is, it is just like a sight that is so epic to behold that it'll probably be a highlight of the film. And I didn't even let it burn all the way, like it was so epic. It, it, I was kind of getting worried about like, oh shit, like this is... It just blew my expectations. So this whole thing just felt like, see, this is what I wanted the whole movie production to be like. You know, this this type of like innocent creative feeling where you're you're doing this creative work and you don't run into these odd problems with people. 
you know, it felt like exactly what it should have been to begin with. And it, w- it definitely was the highlight of 2022. So with that being said, please... <coughs> please like this video and comment and then subscribe to this channel if you'd like to see more videos on this channel. Goodbye everybody, see you soon.